were going to die. I'm going to be there, watching you. You're not afraid of the dark, are you? All right, welcome back, guys. As you can tell, the introduction has been reworked. Well, more changed than reworked. I've uh, I've put a floor model in instead of just drawing a flat map. And added some water and some valleys and some hills just to make the game seem more immersive. But, uh, yeah. And as you can see... I have an entire menu programmed, and I'm going to show you guys how to program, or the basis of how to program one of the buttons. I've picked one of the easiest buttons to work with, so we're going to look at the story button. Um, I'm not really going to explain too much, I'm just going to show you how some of this works, because some of these functions do not work with Game Maker Studio. And uh, I will show you guys what those functions are here in a little while. We're going to look at the step event of the story button. Ortho means ortho orthographic, obviously. But, yeah, if it's just a button, I just name it ortho underscore instead of obj underscore ortho underscore because the obj just kind of seems redundant because they're all in the same object category. So I just omit obj underscore. But, yeah. The depth is set to a 7,000, so it draws above everything, except for, like, the screen fades and the eyelid animation that you guys saw. But, yeah, we're going to open the step event, and we're going to look ex look at exactly how this works. It's just going to control all the basic constants of, like, the size changing and the smooth, like, the when the size of the button changes, the smoothness of it. And uh, the sound effects. So yeah. Here is the click response. And the static response. All the responses that the button has. It's going to jump to the middle of the screen. At the top you see x equals manifest dot xx divide by 2. That is... Uh, that function does not work in Game Maker Studio. The manifest dot... The manifest object has variables that do not respond to Game Maker Studio, so we're going to ignore that part. I'll go over that in a little bit. But this is the code that controls uh, the, the lines 4 through 10 control the smoothness of the button sizing and the button placement. And lines 12 through 24 control the clicking response, whether or not the menu's opened all the way, whether or not you can click a button and then... Basically, lines 17 to 22 control the size and the placement of each button. So that's what you guys saw when the menu shrank down to a point. Um, yeah, I put green notes all over my code, so that way I don't even really have to explain it. The green notes tell you what the stuff does. So uh, yeah, we're going to go over the manifest object, the variables that do not work in Game Maker Studio in the create event. Um... I believe Game Maker Studio has functions that um, built-in functions that take care of all of the stuff that this man that the manifest object does. 
So yeah, we're going to open up the variable base, the script underneath the variable base here in a second. Yeah, I just, uh, yeah, I don't use Game Maker Studio. I want it to, but I can't find any downloads for it. Only Game Maker Studio 2, and yeah, it's just not good. But here is the manifest basic, the create event for the manifest, the XX and the YY. Those highlighted functions do not work in Game Maker Studio. I believe that they're not even in the database of the built-in functions. I believe you can just use the regular full screen functions in the game settings window, and I believe that that will take care of all of it. In game Maker 8, I had to use this. So these two local variables, and it and uh, relating the local variables to the object to get the display width and the display height to draw things on the display the proper way. So this basically works for any display that you plug it up to. And these are for drawing things relative to the display of the display size of whatever display that you're using. But like I said, this does not work in Game Maker Studio. We're going to be looking at the draw event for the story, the, the story button. This will go over how it's drawn onto the screen and what kind of draw functions I used. Um... The menu is actually drawn over the game. It's not actually a separate room. It's just or it's just two-dimensional sprites drawn in ortho set perspective. But yeah, I'm going to go over that here in a second. Just want to make sure you guys are somewhat understanding this. It's a kind of it's kind of complicated, but yeah, I thought I should walk you guys through some of this stuff cuz you could use some of it cuz I needed it. But here's the draw event for the story button. I've set the surface size to 1366 by 768. So regardless of what display you plug it up to, it's going to stretch that 1366 by 768 to the screen. And that's what I'm using for the um, the button, the button size and where where basically where to draw the button. So I use the draw sprite extended function. Um, yeah, and the the two S's, those that's the scale local variable that runs in the step that I showed you before. There's really not much to go over here. There's only two lines of, I mean, there's only two actual lines of code here. It's pretty simple. But yeah. That is about it. Um, actually, I think instead of using 1366 by 768, I probably should have used manifest.xx and manifest.yy. Or, no, my, I'm sorry, I should have used view height view and view width view because the, the drawing doesn't really work the same. I, I use 1366 by 768 for backgrounds. So it scales them properly. But yeah, I'm going to go in and actually switch that. But yeah, that is essentially it for the tutorial, kind of tutorial. Just showing you guys how I would use, how I program my buttons and my, my menus. The game does now have a menu. And I think that's what it'll look like in the final product. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. And I will see you guys in the next video, which will be posted soon. Have a good one.